Good morning everyone and welcome once again to my channel. Thank you for stopping by. Well, 2020 has been an awful year, isn't it? Um, it's hit everyone. Uh, for me, uh, videos, uh, making videos and going flying, it's been absolutely disastrous and I've had very little with no opportunity to uh, upload the amount of videos that I would like. Um, those people that have continued uh, to upload videos on new reviews and things like that, um, yes, I've been very lucky. I wish I could have been in their shoes, but uh, it is what it is, and we'll we'll continue. I'll, I'll try and continue with what I've got. I do have an awful backlog of items, planes, helicopters, and all that sort of thing. To uh, um, and they're probably well out of date now. Um, I think some of the stuff that I do have. Uh, to upload it's probably coming up for a year old now so uh, it may not be of interest to uh, to some people but hopefully this one will be uh, this is the JJRC X15 Dragonfly as you can see it's virtually a copy of the uh, Parrot and Naffy this was previously marketed by Banggood as the KK13 Dragonfly now, unfortunately, uh, I think the latter part of last year and early part of this year, it seems to have failed on the YouTube reviews that was uh, put up by people like Quadcopter101 and other people. Um, it especially failed in the DVR, the onboard recording. Now, I've become interested in this because I, I know full well that JJRC, when they have got hold of a quadcopter frame uh, they developed it themselves and they tend to put their own software and indeed hardware in some cases into a model to make it successful um, an example I can cite is the old Seafly Dream which did have its problems when JJRC got hold of the mould or they may have had the mould made for them, they just put in their own hardware, in some cases, certainly software, and I still have my JJRC X9 Heron, which flies absolutely fantastically. I'm hoping this is going to be the same. Uh, what I can tell you, I've had a very, very brief hover, and I've tested out the DVR, and the quality does look very good indeed. So, we'll have a very quick look at what we get in the box. <clears throat> I won't go into too, too much detail, but you can see what you get uh, in this package here. You get you get this little case with it as well. It packs everything nicely away. And there's also a strap there. So, if you feel that way inclined, you can carry it over your shoulder or whatever. And you've got some spare pockets there inside and outside too. Uh, is there one on the back? No, there's not one on the back, but uh, not an issue. Anyway, so we have a manual, which is very, very good. Um, not too much Chinglish, and it's very, very well explained. Uh, quite well annotated, annotated. The first half is for English customers. Uh, the second half is looks like simplified Chinese. There, obviously, for your Chinese customers. You also have an app instruction book there as well so you can download the app in Android uh, and that is for iOS customers and that is the Swift GPS app that you are looking for and um, one thing I would say uh, testing out the app is that it's normally set into beginner mode and if you try if you you can come out of beginner mode and set your own uh, distance, height, and RTH altitude, but saving appears to be a problem. Now, whether that appears it is going to continue to be a problem out in the field, I don't know. I've yet to test it. The weather is pretty awful at the moment. So, I've gone for the three battery version, um, primarily because trying to get batteries individually from China is non impossible at the moment through certain suppliers um, they're citing safety reasons so if you get an opportunity if you like 
if you, you think you like this drone, then go for the three battery version. It'll probably save you a bit of money in the long term. In the bag of spares, we've got a full set of propellers. And these are floppy dog propellers. Uh, and you have two spare gimbals, a, a set of screws, and a screwdriver. You also have a USB type C for charging the two cell 7.6 volts, uh, which is going to be 8.4 volt fully charged LiPo battery of 3000 milliamps. Um, and what we got here, we've got a micro USB which charges the internal battery for the transmitter. Now, one thing I would say is I'm not entirely sure about the bandwidth or the quality of these cables because they appeared to be sitting around trying to charge, but I couldn't determine that they were actually charging that well. So I've used my own micro USB and um, USB type C cables to charge the battery and transmitter and they appear to do it at a much faster time. Right, onto the uh, drone. So, right. Now, th this is quite a common feature now. Uh, if you just briefly press once, that will give you the status of the batteries and it's done in percentages. So 100%, 75%, uh, 50 25 percent if you press and hold you can then turn on the battery and the drone itself uh, just press uh, for about three seconds and the battery will go off okay uh, we have here this I believe is going to be your 5.8 or oh, sorry the 5 gig Wi-Fi transmission aerial uh, is fairly exposed so just be aware of that and try not to damage that um, at the back we have the onboard DVR uh, I have tested it it does work very well and the quality is very good indeed um, for this uh, the trial flights um, I'm just using a class 10 SanDisk Ultra 16 gig uh, if you're going to do long flights then it's probably worth investing in a 32 gig just press that in and wait till you hear that to click just to make sure that's in which it is okay on to the transmitter now the transmitter itself it seems fairly well made it's hobby grade and i'll just get out the uh, instruction sheets here and just go over the features of what we've got here okay so we've got a wheel which is uh, rather strange for this type of model which will control your rates so I do believe there's three rates on here and we have the left shoulder button which is number 14 it's long press for 1.5 seconds for return to home so that's your return to home button um, whether that's actual dual function, I'm not entirely sure. Um, this one, which is the camera and the video button, obviously that is a dual function button. And we have so a quick click, quick click for a photo, and a long click, press and hold for video, and that will be displayed in your app. Uh, we have the camera angle. Here, uh, which I, I do believe is from what I've uh, tested already it's better just to quickly flick it like that if you press and if you pr press and hold I think that's gonna lean the camera to an angle that you don't really want I from, from what I've seen already okay uh, we have a GPS function here so I'm gonna give it a quick test flight indoors uh, I'm gonna go for all the procedure of setting up the calibration uh, for the gyros and the GPS although I know that I won't get 
in many or if at all any GPS signal in my house uh, so I can turn it off and I can go for an indoor flight okay uh, button number four which will be master mode what ma what what is master mode I don't quite know yet so uh, that is something I look into um, Number two, which is here, it's going to be headless or hopeless mode. Well, I don't know about you, I don't really use that. <laughs> I don't really use that. I've got, it, it's a good gimmick, which might come in handy for some people. Um, no, not for me. Um, there's a power button, and it's not a press and hold, it's just a press and it's on. I'll, I'll show you that. There's a uh, automatic takeoff button. Uh, which is number 12 and number 10 should be uh, a landing button that's not the same as a return to home that is just to land wherever it is or long press for three seconds for an emergency stop okay so just a quick uh, I've still got the covering film on there at the moment so you may not be able to see too quick clearly so if I turn that on uh, you'll see have uh, indication of the power of the power of the battery there. Uh, this this batch uh, this light here that's always uh, flashy. And we've got here. Uh, let's have a look at the display reader. Okay, so we have the aircraft signal, which is a signal from the drone to um, the transmitter. And this box here, which says GPS on, off, that can be controlled by. Actually, I've got to. I've, I've actually got to stick the drone on for that to work. Okay, so right, um, we have your height and your distance. And yeah, the drone needs to be on uh, for me to. Uh, get these some of these functions to work but we have a TX battery indicator and an R, RX battery indicator uh, let's have a look here ah here we go right number two GPS signal okay and it says we've got here 18 pieces <laughs> I don't think so uh, right okay I'll tell you what Let's quickly set this up and we'll go for a very, very quick flight indoors. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, back again. So uh, we've got the transmitter turned on already and we're going to press and hold and hopefully turn on the drone. There we go. And you can hear the, the chirp from the uh, transmitter here. Just It's just confirming that it's bound now with the drone. Okay, so to calibrate your dry rows, with the sticks, it's going to be down and to the left. And you'll see the lights flashing quickly there, just to confirm that is done. And to uh, calibrate the gyros uh, for the GPS, it's down and to the right. And you'll see the, the lights changing there, they're flashing on and off there. You've got blue lights at the front, red lights at the back. So I don't think we'll get very many uh, satellites with this uh, inside my house. So, okay, so I've tra transversed the, uh, the, the quad round to the left three times until the transmitter chirps and it's up, the drone facing upwards and round three times until it chirps again, which it's now done. Uh, the next thing to do, is we're going to go into our settings and we're going to find a Wi-Fi signal and we're looking for the Swift GPS okay so we've got that I'm going to wait for a notification from my uh, Nokia 7 There we go. So we've got that, and we're going to look for the Swift GPS app. Start. 
come up and hopefully we should have an image coming through there we go look at that so there are two ways to activate uh, the camera video function you can either do it uh, via the transmitter and if you wish to uh, activate the video it's a long press down there and you can see the time is now activated so stop we we'll stop that um, I can also use the app that seems to be uh, working quite well and once again we're using the app to control the video okay so we do have a number of features here I can't use the features on here I'm afraid uh, what I will say is we do have if we swap there we have app control for the camera there we go and likewise you can use it the same here okay right I'm gonna put the uh, drone on the floor and we'll do a very very quick quick flight uh, indoors uh, to enable me to fly this indoors I'm gonna take it out of GPS mode so you can see there that's now switched off I don't have any GPS satellites uh, being received by the transmitter or, or it's all up here either okay so uh, I'll just move the camera and we'll uh, have a look and see how, how it flies indoors right back again and we'll start the start off with video which I'm going to upload is only going to be a very very uh, short flight So there, there are two ways to take off. Once you start the motors, you can press the uh, the takeoff button here, or you can just um, raise the throttle. Which was a bit sudden, <laughs> but we got there. So hopefully, you can see that image coming through on the phone. And you just, hopefully you should be able to see, you may be able to see the light at the bottom of the drone, which is um, flashing on and off to indicate the video is recording. It's getting affected by its own prop wash here. Okay, what I can do is um about a minute's worth of video there hopefully at least that will give you an idea as to the quality of the video that i think is coming out here certainly it's coming out absolutely fantastic on the phone nice and clear uh hope hopefully that might be reduced in at least part um on, on the the um on the finished video but uh th this is just a brief overview of the jj 
RC X15 Dragonfly. I'm quite pleased to have got this. Uh, I, I do trust what JJRC tend to do with some of the airframe, fra airframes that they come across from uh, different manufacturers. Um, so thank you very much indeed for uh, watching this video. I do have a lot more videos to uh, upload. As I said before, I must be about a year behind on some of the stuff that I've got to uh, uh, make videos for but uh, if I don't do it then uh, <laughs> you're not going to know my thoughts um, anyway right thank you for joining me and we'll see you again on the next video hopefully it won't be too long before we can take this out for a proper test flight bye for now good afternoon everyone and uh, welcome back to uh, another field I've managed uh, in between storms um, if you can see some very dark clouds over there We've got some more storms coming in. Um, this is a very brief window uh, of opportunity I've got here to uh, test fly the JJRC X9 Dragonfly. It's bound up. Uh, let's have a look. I don't know if you can see on the screen here. I've got 14 satellites, so uh, in theory it should be safe to go. Um, let's press the record button, and we should have a countdown. there we go okay video is on countdown now so um, here we go okay we'll just do a uh, hover test I'll face I'll just raise it and hopefully it face towards me a little bit It is quite breezy. Right, let's go into... I think that might be rate two or rate three. Let's go for a quick spin round. The wind is coming from my right hand side so you can see it's leaning over trying to uh, trying to fight against that wind. I'm still getting a level level image though, that's good. So the gimbal's working quite well. As I say, I don't really think I should be out in this strength of wind with this, it's only a two cell. But uh, at least it's a test fly. I can see looking into the sun on my mobile phone screen there, it seems to be quite dark. So it seems to be making a, quite a, a good definition there between the light and the shade. Right, let's go forward again. Seems to be holding its height. I think in reality this is meant for calmer days. Okay, let's hold it there. 
Right, now around there, the wind is coming through quite strong, which is why I'm around here, so you, you don't get too much of the wind noise in the microphone. Um, yes, I thought it was beginning to uh, uh, go into toilet bowl there for a second, but uh, no, it's not. It seems to be holding on against the strength of the wind. And just to give you an idea of the strength of the wind, if you see those clouds there, they're moving along quite a pace. We've got roughly, I think we're meant to have about 40 mile an hour winds today. So uh, as you can see, I mean, definitely in a sheltered spot. Right, let's stop the recording. I'm gonna take a couple of photographs. Turn around and take another one. There we go, that's better. Right, this uh, review was really on spur of the moment. I never expected to see any sunshine today. Uh, as I said earlier this morning, it started snowing today. And uh, we woke up to a blanket of snow. Uh, thankfully, that's all gone. Right, let's see if we can bring it back. Now, I don't know why it's beeping. Let's press return to home. There we go. Hopefully it's rising, it's gonna make its way back. Which it is doing. It's gone a bit too far. There we go, it's gone back. Oh, that's good. This would be interesting. Well, what do you know? That's, that's gonna... That's looking fairly good. <laughs> that is a very good return to home it took off from here and what's the distance there uh, two feet yeah quite impressed with that um, I will do a proper review or a proper flight when um, the weather calms down and it, maybe we've got some uh, more favourable conditions but uh, I shouldn't have flown it out in this strength of wind, but I'm still quite impressed with it. Uh, very good, very good indeed. Right, okay, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Uh, as I say, very much an impromptu um, uh, review, flight review here, but I wanted to get it out uh, just to see what it was like. I'm sure the flight footage that I've taken uh, is going to be quite good, and I will upload that on the final video. Until then, um, until I see you on the next video, take care, stay safe. Bye for now.